Who needs help figuring out what to wear when it's cold? Do you? Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna share with you some outfits for the snowy cold weather. This is real weather. Like we're not talking like a mild day in Texas that's Texas cold, we're talking about real cold, like when it drops down below zero or there's a wind chill or there's a lot of snow, there's a lot of ice. Severe winter weather would be more like it, which really is half of the country. And I know some of you are from Canada, which is most of Canada. <laughs> and then if you're on the east coast of Canada, I know you've got the humidity mixed in there. So it even feels colder in your bones cold. I understand what that cold is like because I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up in Watertown, New York, which is right on the border of Canada. So it was very cold and snowy growing up. Now we live in Telluride, Colorado. It is still very cold, but it is a drier cold. So there's no humidity in the air and it does feel a bit warmer here. Today I wanna to share three outfits that you can wear for real cold weather. These are all looks that I think are very stylish in addition to being highly functional for that snowy cold weather. So it's a very strategic combination and I have seen other bloggers and YouTubers put cold weather outfits together, but until you really intensely understand what that cold is like, I feel like it's impossible to really do it right. Before I dive into the three outfits, I kind of want to tell you what not to do. It's not meant to slight anybody who does this. It's just meant to say like, here are some of the things you probably see on Instagram or YouTube, but they are not things that I would recommend for real cold weather. So if it's a 40 or 50 degree day and it's a little bit snowy, there's a little snow on the ground, there's no wind chill, you could do these things, but for intense weather, I don't think they're appropriate. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is rain boots as snow boots. So I see this a lot on Instagram where people wear those super cute hunter boots and the scrunched up, you know, Ugg socks or the scrunched up well socks, and it looks adorable but it is not practical for severe winter weather. The rain boots may keep you kind of dry, but they don't do anything to protect you in terms of warmth. And then even when you add the socks underneath the boots, it still does not do enough to keep your feet warm. I know this because I've tried it. I actually did a blog post about it. You guys can check that out if you want to, but that's an example of what not to do. Another one would be to wear just ear warmers instead of a full hat. You lose so much heat from your head, especially the top of your head that you are losing an opportunity to stay warm when you do ear warmers. If you just want to do ear warmers and then wear a hat over it, that's totally fine. Uh, if it doesn't look too goofy and you can pull that off, great. Or I mean, wear your head warmers over your hat. That can sometimes look really cute and that certainly is functional and fine and will definitely keep you warm. But the the head or the ear warmers just on their own. Ear muffs, that's what they're called. I'm like, ear warmers, what are they called? There's a word for them. Ear muffs, yes, I got it. Those on their own are not enough. So that's sort of what not to do. I'm gonna get into what to do. The first outfit I wanna show you is something that I wore recently on our trip to Poland, and it was ridiculously cold there. I mean, super duper cold. It was definitely below zero. There was definitely a wind chill and, or maybe it was in the teens, but the wind chill made it feel like even colder. And it was also very damp. So it was in your bones cold. So here's what I do. Here's my combination for every day when you need extreme warmth. The combination is a base layer. The base layer can be either a dry wick shirt, thermal shirt, something with a wool in it. A wool blend is typically the best and the warmest, but you could also just go with a, like a dry wick active wear shirt and a pinch as long as it's long sleeve. And I would go with either crew neck or turtleneck, whatever your preference is, but you want that long sleeve, very fitted, either wool blend or dry wick or both base layer shirt. Same with pants. If you can pull it off, under your pants, do that. If you can't pull that off under your pants, you can always try just tights. Tights can work in a pinch, that's what I used to use back in the day. But what you're gonna do is make sure that you have a really good base layer. It should be a wool blend. It should be breathable. It should keep you dry. So it should have some sort of dry wicking technology in the fabric. So that's key. The second layer that you're going to use, and I know it's going to be tempting to try and throw on like your chunkiest, 
coziest, warmest sweater. That's not what you should do. What you should do is wear a sweater that's very fitted to the body and in a fine fabric like cashmere. So oftentimes when I go skiing, I'll do my base layer and then I'll do a cashmere crew neck sweater or a cashmere turtleneck sweater and that's what I wear and that's all I wear, except you know, obviously a coat overneath. So I just use a very fitted cashmere crew neck, very simple. Cashmere is a very warm fabric. Also a wool blend sweater would be great. As I just mentioned, wool is a very warm fabric, so you could do a wool blend as long as it's fitted to the body and lightweight, okay? Again, we're, we're creating this layering effect and the temptation is to go big on the layers, but really what you wanna do is go small on the layer. So it's sort of counterintuitive. You just wanna be more strategic about your fabric selection. So that second layer is your cashmere sweater. The third layer, and this is one that I've really pulled out a lot recently, and it's kind of an unusual combination, but I love it, is a packable, incredibly lightweight puffer coat and I use a long version of that but you could do a shorter version if you wanted to the longer version obviously is going to keep you warmer because the longer version will cover your behind your thighs your hips it usually goes down to about mid mid thigh and you can do the longer or the shorter version what's the most important thing about this layer is that it's a very lightweight puffer it's a very thin puffer. So what I look for is a packable puffer. And what that's going to do is give you two options. It's going to give you that puffer coat for travel option. And then also again, this layering piece that really is essential to that cold, cold weather environment. I packed on the puffer coat over the base and the cashmere sweater, and then the puffer coat and I zip it up. Okay. That's my third layer essentially. The fourth layer that I've been adding is a wool topper or wool coat over that. Under no circumstances is a wool coat on its own warm enough in severe weather. And I think it's great for like 40 or 50 degrees. I think it can be great if you're just doing the car dash, like the dash from the car to the building, totally fine. But if it's real cold and you know you're gonna be out in it for any length of time, whether you're like the hockey mom or um, maybe you've got errands that you need to run, maybe you're working outside that day or you're touring houses, I don't know what you're doing outside, but any length of time outside, that wool coat does not cut it. After the puffer, throw the wool topper. And the reason I do that is it gives me another layer, but it also, especially with travel, it gives me that option. So I have two pieces there. And it also just makes it look so much more polished and sophisticated because the black puffer, let's face it, is not the best looking coat out there. And it is quite boring. There's not a lot of pizzazz with the black puffer. What I love about that topper is it really does add a little bit of excitement and interest to your winter outfit. It also provides an added layer of warmth, which is great. And as I just mentioned, when you travel, if you brought these two pieces, then you now suddenly have a wool topper if it's just kind of a 40, 50 degree day. You've got the puffer if you just wanna wear the puffer alone, or you've got both that you can wear both together. Now on our trip, I did wear both of them together pretty much every day we were there because it was just that cold. In addition to that, you've got other accessories that you need to have other pieces in addition to those base layers and the coats to sort of finish off and, and solidify the warmth, to trap that warmth in your body. A scarf is definitely a must, and you could go infinity scarf, snood, um, you could go traditional scarf and just wrap it around. What I love to do with my scarf when it gets really cold is I'll pull it up over my nose and mouth and I can breathe into it like this, and then I can warm up my whole face doing that. And I do that a lot when I'm skiing. And then need a hat. Hats are another area where you know, not all are created equal. I love a faux fur hat, and I think they're the warmest. You could go a trapper hat. Those are the ones with the ears that come down. Or you could do a knit hat, you know, the, pom the really cute pom-pom hat. But I highly recommend that if you're gonna get one for severe cold and real snow winter weather, I would get one with a built-in headband on the inside. It usually is made out of like fleece, and that just, it just doubles down and keeps this part of you know your ears and your head warmer. If you don't have that hat, you don't wanna invest in that kind of hat, that style of hat, you could do a headband on the inside of your knit hat to keep you extra warm. You also could do a hoodie, 
uh, one of your base layers has a hood, put that on, put your knit hat on, and then that adds a little extra warmth as well. In addition to the scarf and the hat, you also need mittens. And I did strategically say mittens because gloves are not as warm as mittens. And then also on your feet, what you wear on your feet is very important. As I mentioned before, you know, there may be a temptation to wear those cute rain boots with the scrunched up socks, but that's not gonna keep your feet warm enough. The warmest boots are the ones that are waterproof or water resistant, and they are made for snow. So they will say, you know, negative whatever, negative 30 in the description of the boot. Sorel is a big one, a big brand for super duper warm boots. Ugg is another one. I have a few pairs of Uggs. Columbia, a lot of you expressed to me last year or the year before that you loved Columbia snow boots. If you need hiking waterproof boots, I think Solomon makes the best of those. And then Land's End uh, sent me a pair recently that look a lot like the Joan of Arctics by Sorrel. So it's a good dupe for those. And those are waterproof and those are warm as well. I like to have the heavy duty pair for super duper snow. And then I like to have a slip on pair. So that's my Uggs that are waterproof, that are warm. The slip on pair is just for every day. You know, you don't want to lace up a boot. The nice thing about the Land's End version is they do have a side zip. And that's something I now look for almost exclusively because I don't want to lace, sounds so lazy. <laughs> I don't want to lace anything up. Oh my gosh. So those are some of the boot brands I would recommend. Jumping back to the base layer for a minute, I didn't really talk about brands for those. And I would say Hot Chilies is a great one. Patagonia makes some great base layers and also Arteryx. Arteryx is a great all-weather, snowproof, waterproof, advanced technology brand. So when you want the like no fooling around or stuff, that's a good go-to. North Face is another one that's a good go-to brand for that kind of thing. Anyway, the, those are just a few of the brands I wanted to mention for the base layers, but I'll put some suggestions for base layers, for boots, for hats, for coats, for puffers, for toppers, all of that below in the description box for you guys to check out. When I was in Poland, I wore the puffer, the wool topper, I did a headband, I did the fur hat, the faux fur hat over that. I did my waterproof warm Ugg boots and I think I did have gloves just so I could use my phone, the tech gloves, but I would recommend mittens for when you really want to keep your, your hands warm. The next outfit is very similar to the first one in concept, so I won't go through every single step and layer again. I don't want to be redundant. And also, I did do a video on layering. I think I called it Layering 101. If you want to check that out, I'll put that in the description box below so you can go back and watch that. It's just that sort of layering cake broken down, and I focused only on that. So that's another one you can go back and watch. But so the next look I wanted to show you is the same concept, but I wanted to give you options when it comes to your winter wear, because I know that it's easy to throw on the same warm coat every day and you kind of get bored with it or you kind of just feel like, eh, you know, you don't look you don't feel like you're looking very stylish. So I want to give you options so that you feel like you can mix things up and look fresh day in and day out. So the second option is to wear a different topper that's a little bit heavier and a little bit longer. I still do the puffer. And again, you don't have to do the long puffer. You can do a shorter puffer, but it just the key is to have it be super fitted to the body and super lightweight. And then this topper is one that I've had for a couple years. It's by Lovers and Friends. It's a plaid duster coat. It's very warm. It's oversized, so it layers beautifully over things. Again, the length of it is so key because it really does, it's like almost like you're wrapped up in a blanket, which is exactly what you want if you are that mom at the hockey rink all the time or you're outside all the time for work. So I don't know what it is that you're doing day in and day out, but a lot of you are out in the weather, so this would be a great option. That's also very stylish and very sophisticated and unique. It's not like the same old, same old. It's something different. Along those same lines, you could go with a faux fur coat option. And I just found a couple that are so, so fantastic that I wanted to share with you. And they're both in a cocoon coat style. Again, that oversized coat style. So they layer beautifully over things. One is a faux shearling. It's by Avec Le Fee, which is the same line that designed the suede trench coat I always talk about which you guys may remember. And then the second coat I wanted to show you, and this coat, by the way, the color is so gorgeous. It looks so luxe. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And then the other one I wanted to show you is this 
beautiful forest green faux fur cocoon coat. This one is by Kendall and Kylie, which I had not bought any of their stuff as of yet. But this is this piece just stood out to me and I thought I would try it. I really love it. Again, the size is great because it is perfect for layering. The color is just stunning and it is incredibly warm, which is the whole point. We want to stay warm. So we want to be stylish and warm. So you can take that concept, maybe you pick one and you just have those options. You've got the puffer alone option. You've got the puffer with just the wool topper option. Then you've got the puffer with the duster coat option or the puffer with the faux fur coat option. So you just feel like you have choices in the morning for your day so that you don't feel like things are getting stale and you're totally bored. And you feel like you're going out there in the weather, staying warm, but then also looking really stylish while you're out there. The third option I wanted to talk about is the straight up puffer. And there is the packable, really lightweight puffer that I've been talking about, but then there's another option and that is the heavy duty puffer, the no fooling arounder puffer. For a couple of years now, I've had the Sam New York puffer and it comes in short versions. So I have a really cute kind of retro 70s style short version. And then it comes in longer cuts, longer silhouettes, and I have one of those too, it's called the Infinity. And that is going to be the one that keeps you absolutely the warmest. This was the coat I brought with me when we went to Iceland and I just knew straight up like it was gonna be so cold that I, I couldn't mess around. So it's, it's definitely the no fooling arounder. What I loved about this particular puffer is it's shiny. So I felt like that gave it a little extra something and it made it a little bit more modern, but then also it was belted. So it gave you a shape. It didn't just look like you're, you know, your big sleeping bag black puffer. Although those have a place and they certainly are warm. So that's what I liked about this one. And there's a dupe for it by S13 that I will link below that's a quarter of the price and really nice and looks almost identical to the more expensive version that I got. That's your third option is to just go with the straight up, no fooling around or thick, puffer coat and that is going to keep you incredibly warm. You still want to do all the stuff underneath and you still want to do the hats and the boots and the mittens and the scarves, but you know, just getting that combination right, the base layer combination, the sweater combination, the coat combination is going to keep you so so much warmer. It's a game changer, you know, when it's really cold and you're cold or you run cold, you've got to have the appropriate gear on. You have to have the right gear, you have to have the right layers on to keep your body warm. I think that, you know, my objective is always to still remain stylish and still feel good. So I feel like all three of those options do exactly that. They're very functional, but they're also fashionable, which is what we want. Okay, and one other bonus tip I wanted to give you is the parka. You could always swap out that heavy puffer for a parka. And the gold standard in terms of parkas is Canada Goose. They're supposed to be among the warmest parkas out there. Another option that's much more affordable is Land's End. They make really good looking parkas that are also incredibly warm and waterproof. And oftentimes parkas come in really fun colors too. So you can try something like this. This is the Land's End parka and this bright bold red. And that does feel like it's adding a little excitement to your winter wardrobe. So yeah, that's your bonus tip. Just wanted to remind you all about the parka. And also just to say, if you guys have found what you think is the holy grail for winter coats when it comes to warmth, please share in the description box below so we can all glean from your knowledge and expertise. <laughs> um, we, should, we can all share resources, which I think is so important. It's impossible for me to test every brand and every, every coat. So I depend on you guys to chime in when you found something that is awesome. Definitely do share. Okay, so that's like a, I feel like I threw a lot at you. There's like a lot of brand info in there. There's a lot of layering info. There's a lot of coat and accoutrements mentioned. If you have questions, let me know. Just uh, comment below in the description box. I also am hosting a bunch of giveaways on the website 
right now. So be sure to subscribe to the website so you get those notifications and know about all these really fun giveaways happening. And it's just me, it's not a whole medley of bloggers. So it, there is a really good chance that you could win. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.